Welcome to Arizona Living, your home, your inspiration. I'm Jane Munzeres. September is National Sewing Month, so we're coming to you from the Sewing Asylum. But before we show you around, let's take a look at what's coming up on the show. Getting the look of real wood floors at a lower cost, we'll show you how. A father and son duo who create beautiful works of art out of metal. And a craft room crash that has some real spark to it. All that and more coming up on Arizona Living. We are here at Sewin Asylum and it is the perfect place to be because September is National Sewing Month and joining me today is the owner, Erica Doyle. Erica, this place is so cool. I am in my element here. Yes. What is a Sewin Asylum? So the Sewin Asylum, I've often referred to it as a sewing playground. It's your time, your chance to sew what you want without interruption, but you're getting instruction. Um, I have my degree in fashion design as does Sarah and then we also have Becky who's very well versed in sewing and quilting. So we cover all the bases and we cover all the ages. We used to say our demographic was from 8 to 88, but we've had a few 7 and even a 6 year old in from time to time. But um, we just love sharing sewing and what you want to make, you can do it here. And you can learn how to do it here too. What a great idea for a retail store. Where do you get the name Sewin Asylum? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have my degree in fashion design, as I said, but um, along the way, so when I started out, I was teaching consumers how to use their sewing machines. Wasn't making a whole lot of money, and I really felt I needed a change. So I went back to school, earned my elementary education certification, taught fourth grade for a while. Anyway, along the way, um, I had my first daughter. I wanted to stay home with her, and then I had a second daughter, and I was teaching nights and weekends. And my classes grew from our local big box store to having classes out of our home. So I'm trying to navigate a newborn, a two-year-old, down for naps, kids coming in for classes after school. And so if you say sewing asylum kind of fast, it almost sounds like insane asylum. <laughs> but it's your safe haven for sewing. It's your safe, it's your happy place and where you can be creative. So that's kind of how the name came about. Why are you so passionate about teaching other people how to sew? You know, I was kind of an oddball. <laughs> Still am in a way. But um, when I learned to sew, and it was kind of at the end of that home ec era and they weren't promoting sewing and actually sewing was kind of dying but what i loved about it was okay i was frugal and if i had some fabric i could make something up and have more clothes than if i bought them and it just gave me an opportunity to be creative and and, and put things together and just be unique, not look like everybody else. Right, exactly. And that is one of the beautiful things about being able to sew. So you're going to join us a little bit later on in the show. Mm -hmm. We're going to talk more about the classes that you offer here and the things that people can buy here and learn here. Absolutely. Thank you. Summer is winding down and it might be a good time to start thinking about new flooring. Well, the experts at AAA Floors have some beautiful laminate options for you. I'm Ken Tran, CEO and the president of the company. Laminate floor is man-made, it's artificial uh, because it's man-made the surface, it's really tough. What it is is a printed picture photograph of a real wood floor. So in a production, we would take photograph rendition of a real product and recreate it in a very, very tough surface so that it's very, very scratch resistant. The density of it, it's a lot harder than a real wood floor, so it's not gonna dent easily. And from doing that, the price point drops significantly. This is our four latest creation of laminate floors, uh, Kenwood, Napa, Windsor, and Sonoma. We want to make sure our product is tough. Uh, we produce a laminate floor that's commercially rated, huge scratch resistant. In addition to the detail, we, we want to recreate a real wood floor look and feel. You can see the knots are deeply grain into the product, you can actually feel it. The line of a craft line, if it were a real wood, it would run through the board. In addition to recreating the real look, 
we want to make a product that is so tough um, we can scratch they are I'm scratching with a, a metallic key they're extremely extremely scratch resistant our truffles laminate are resealable years later if you really are going to wear this out or you want to make it a little bit shinier or change slight color uh, you didn't have to uh, buy a new product. Uh, we could resurface, recoat, and re-varnish this product. There's no product on the market today that are recoatable. Only a truffle laminate can have that process done by us. Uh, they are so real, you couldn't even tell them apart uh, from the real product. Installation of a laminate floor is relatively an easy process and a very clean process. We have a huge selection in terms of color, texture, plank width. We have darker floor, we have more rustic floors. We have, uh, some of our new ones are extremely modern. Uh, so we have tons of choices. Overall, uh, the benefit of having laminate floor is extremely high durability and it's very affordable. Sewing is becoming trendy again thanks to social media sites like Pinterest and Instagram. There are countless ideas online for first time and even experienced sewers. So go explore and get inspired. We've got more to come on Arizona Living. If you're looking to add a creative touch to your home, Rusted Bull has some unique designs for you. And we'll visit a place where you can learn the art of glass blowing. The guys at Rusted Bull seem to be making a big impression on their customers and their unique designs are one of the reasons. Custom metal work is very popular right now in landscaping. It is a huge trend right now. Rusted Bull is really good. I mean, not only good at what they do from a quality perspective, but good from an artistic perspective, and then also very good in working with the customer as well. They're 100% artist-driven, more artwork than your standard traditional type of cinder block walls or just basic wrought iron. So friendly, so courteous, so respectful, just amazing to work with. I'm Scott Gilbert, this is my son Marcus Gilbert, and together we're Rusted Bull Custom Metal. We have a wide range of things we do. We do fencing, art pieces for inside homes, all the way to a, a, a planter out in the middle of the yard. We do a lot of the gabion rock baskets, we do a lot of trellises. We'll take the typical trellis, is, you know, just a square with mesh in there, and we'll, we'll take it and we'll actually cut out sections and put in shelves and add shape and dimension to them. And it makes it much more than just a thing for your vines to grow on. It's really, it's its, its own piece on your wall. But our favorite projects are definitely the one-offs, the ones where we can come out to people's houses and they describe to us what their vision is and come up with something that is just really cool. Working with Scott and Marcus and Rusted Bull overall really created the, the look we were looking for in our backyard. They put in about 300 linear feet of fencing. Uh, they also created lighting and gabions for us. The other nice thing that Rusted Bull had done for us was um, finish off our mine shaft that we have in our backyard and created an ore cart, so Rusted Bull was phenomenal. They have executed on multiple projects for us, and it doesn't matter how complex or how quote-unquote normal it is, it's always custom. And so to be able to rely on somebody like that is so powerful for me. And they're both just fabulous men. They're both incredibly talented, good guys. If you're looking for unique, if you're looking for somebody who just has really great ideas and is customer service driven, call them first. You're, you're not gonna wanna call anybody else. Give us a chance to, to create something for you. 
Uh, we're local, we're father and son, we're a small business. We value every customer, no matter how big the job. Give us a call and we'll try to make a neat piece for you. The glass artisans at Circle Six Studios have a passion to teach the community the art of glass blowing. Let's take a look. So we're a educational facility and we provide glass for the community. So we're the only shop in downtown Phoenix right now that uh, we offer classes about five days a week to the public and then we also have pretty steadily do custom commission glass work for the area. It's so great. I come in here every morning and like all the toxins get out of my body. It's like you heat up, you sweat, you start a fresh day and I just, I feel like I get to come in and hang out every day. The, the steps that we took to just make some drinking glasses, it's a real basic form, but it allows us to uh, use the majority of the tools that are regular tools in the shop. So we grabbed a blowpipe. I grabbed up a chunk of color, a little transparent solid chunk, um, melted that in, shaped it a little bit on the marver, which is a steel table. Then we added clear, so we walked over to the furnace and we did what's called gathering. So I grabbed a little bit of glass out of there, shaped up the glass a little bit while it was still warm, and blew some air into it. The method that I'm using when we're blowing the air into it is called blowing and capping. So I'm blowing into the pipe, capping my thumb over the end of the pipe. The air gets warm and expands, and the path of least resistance is the hot glass and inflating the bubble a little bit. Uh, the last thing I did to shape up this bubble was to heat up the bottom surface and flatten the bottom. Andy then took the piece over and we started heating up the lip and opened up the lip to make a glass. We offer classes for the public. Everything's available online. If you go on to Circle Six's website, it has a complete listing of classes. Don't be fooled if it looks like it's booked two months out because it really is booked two months out. Uh, we also do group events. So if you have a family or a group of friends or a work party you wanna do that's six people or more, we shut down the studio, you get to handle some glass. Another thing we do is First Fridays. We invite a local brewery in, we do an event called Hot Glass Cold Beer. And people come in, they get a drinking glass which they get to keep at the end of the night. They get to have a few beers from a local brewery. We provide some food and mostly entertainment. And so we have, uh, so we'll blow glass for three hours. We'll do things that we normally don't do. We make it bigger, we make it light on fire. We throw glass across the room. It's pretty theatrical. Um, it's date friendly, family friendly. Last thing, we have a gallery here. So if you need gifts, we have everything from $20 to $5,000 price range for uh, handmade glassware. Okay, a little sewing trivia for you. It was rumored that Singer ordered a buyback program on their original cast iron machines, and those machines were deliberately destroyed by the company using sledgehammers because they were so durable they would last 100 years, which would have a huge impact on their future sales. Here's what's coming up on the show. In our craft room crash, we meet a woman who is putting a twist on floral arrangements. And later, we show you a simple sewing project to update those boring flannel shirts. A torch, some metal, and a playful imagination, and you've got the makings of our next craft room crash. Craft Room Crash, and I'm in Dwight, Illinois, on Old Route 66 outside DIYer Marla Kincaid's shop. Now, 
She says creating art is hard, dirty work, but scrap metal can be romantically beautiful. So let's go crash her craft room and find out what Marla is making today. Hey, Jane. Hey, Marla. Let's go check out my craft room. Let's do it. Hey, Jane, welcome to my craft room. This is it. Ow. <laughs> Oh my God, this is... This is my space. It's really industrial. It is. <laughs> I am a welder who makes art. Really, if you want it made out of metal, I'll make it. <laughs> There's a lot of metal and like yeah. dirty things. Yes. I um, love it. Piece by piece, I'm putting something back into somebody's yard that's already been used in the world. So I'm recycling stuff that goes back into it. So these, right. this is all some of your creations. These are things. My high heel shoe <laughs> for... <laughs> Needs. I'm kind of a tomboy, so, and I grew up with my dad in a welding shop. Started loving it, not realizing at an early age I understood it and didn't think this was a career a girl went to, but then when I got older I was like, why can't I do that, you know? So what are we going to make today? Um, today we're going to make a single flower. It's the first flower that I sort of ever created. First thing that we're going to do is we're going to pick out a piece of metal to make our flowers. We're going to trace out all the petals that we use. Is that like a pattern piece? It's a pattern, yep. So yeah. I keep a pattern of can all I the trace flowers. It? You sure can. This is probably the only thing I'm going to be able to do today. <laughs> we're going to cut them out with a plasma cutter. That's the mark that it's going to do when we start cutting. What if those things hit my legs? Oh, wow. Ah! And then we're going to buff them up and make them shiny. I'm going to stand right here. Okay, and depending on how many sparks of metal, I'm going to move back. Okay. All right. Oh. Ah! Ah! After we make them shiny, we're going to bend them in our arbor press so they have a little depth. <laughs> Perfect. So now we got did it. Now we got it. Ooh, ooh, <laughs> ooh, ooh, ooh. We will attack each petal onto the flower. That's it? Yep, that's it. Nuh uh. Super quick. Wow, that's bright. We will attach a stamen to the center, and we're done with our flower. All right, and then we finish with that. Then once we do that, all we have to do is pull our little our little stamens out in the middle, and we turn this way, and we're all set. Wow, flower is done. That's amazing. <laughs> Thanks so much to Marla. Now we all know how to make a metal flower. And that is what Marla is doing in her craft room. What are you doing in your craft room? I'll see you next time. <laughs> I wonder if any of the bees actually go in there. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, actually. We are back with Erica Doyle, the owner of Sewin Asylum and in this most amazing store. So not only do you have a retail aspect of it, but you also have classes. Yes. And so here's kind of how it all works. When you have a sewing machine, and there's a lot of people out there that have had their sewing machine for a lot of years and they don't know how to thread it, we offer a private lesson. What we have found through our experience is that offering that one-on-one -on -one instruction for your sewing machine. Because if you get in a class with a group of people, you don't know this machine. You've got all these other brands out there. So we offer that first lesson. It runs 90 minutes to two hours, and you learn all the knobs and buttons. You learn about needles. You learn about thread. And you make a drawstring bag. And we offer that for all ages. We found it just works. Great. And then from there, the interesting concept, the sewing lab. So the story behind the sewing lab was when I had started teaching sewing, my coordinator said, okay, Erica, we want them making samples and making a notebook. And so I'd come to teach a class and, and my students would say, you know, uh, the samples are great, but I was working on this skirt during the week. Show me how to do a zipper. So you can bring your own projects mm -hmm. into the sewing lab. Exactly. And get help on those. That's how it works. Now, Erica, I come from a sewing family. So I learned how to sew at age seven from my mom. And I know the importance of learning to sew. Why is it important though? Sewing is just a way, it, it crosses so many lines. You know, it, it's resourceful when you, you've got a button that falls off. You can still wear your clothes if you know how to sew it back on. You move into a new home and you want to hang curtains. It gives you, you know, that sense of color in your new home. It's everything. Sewing can touch your lives in so many different ways that you can rely on yourself without having to ask a friend a favor of sewing on that button for you. Yeah, and not only that, it's fun and it's creative. Absolutely. Now, if somebody were to get started sewing, what is a good first project for them to do? Usually a pillowcase. That's easy peasy. Uh, two fabrics. We sell kits here. 
and it's all straight lines. And you know what, no one is grading you on that. Don't worry about it if the line's a little bit crooked. Just go for it. Erica, I think the biggest takeaway is just not to be afraid and just try sewing. Absolutely. Thank Thanks. you so much oh, for having us. Oh, my pleasure. For more information about the Sewing Asylum, their classes, and everything they have to offer, just head to their website. Coming up on Arizona Living, a cool DIY project that reuses all of those old concert tees in your closet. When you mix your rock tees with your 90s flannels, you get flannels that rock. It's a refashioned look that gives old school grunge a new riff. Let's get started. You'll need an old flannel, your favorite rock t-shirt, and a sewing machine. First, cut the t-shirt apart to get the image you want. Next. Pin the image to the back of your flannel. Be sure to line it up in the center back below the yoke. Now stitch around the t-shirt leaving the edges raw. And hey, if you don't have a sewing machine, don't worry, you can always use fabric glue. And there you have it, a refashioned flannel that makes your style rock. Now that's Grudge Gone Glam. We want to thank Erica and everyone here at Sewing Asylum for having us out today. If you'd like to take up sewing, enroll in a class, or better yet, get a group of friends together and make a fun night out of it. Sewing is a great way to create items for your home decor, like curtains and pillows. And if clothes off the rack don't fit you properly, there's nothing better than the custom fit of clothing you made yourself. So go get sewing. I'm Jane Manzuris, and I'll see you next time on Arizona Living, your home, your inspiration, where we help you create an inspired life.